Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown Vols Fans. I'm your host, Bull. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Gerald Mincy officially entering into the transfer portal. How big of an impact is that going to be on this team? Do we have anyone else on the roster that can maybe fill the void where Gerald Mincy is leaving? And what are we going to be doing moving forward to fill that void, especially in that transfer portal? Let's start off talking about Gerald Mincy since he's been at Tennessee. So Gerald Mincy transfers to Tennessee from Florida in 2022. He plugs in at left tackle for you, and he had a really productive season. Go back and watch that Alabama game. Him and Darnell Wright did a great job of keeping Hendon Hooker clean for the most part. And I think that that's a big part of the reason that we had a very productive offense in 2022. Now, Darnell Wright is a guy who made the switch from left tackle to right tackle in that season, buys in fully, goes on to have a great season, and then you know, goes on to be a top 10 draft pick. So fast forward to 2023, we're asking Gerald Mincy to do that same thing because we've got to go out and get another tackle in that transfer portal in John Campbell. John Campbell wants to play left tackle. We've got to get another body in. So, hey, Gerald Mincy, why don't you just follow in Darnell Wright's footsteps, move on over to Wright, buy in, have a great season, ball out, and then end up being, you know, maybe a first round draft pick as well. So, he never really bought into that. And I think that at that moment, if he could have transferred then, he probably would have. We've kind of seen it throughout all of 2023 with Gerald Minty. He's been hot, he's been cold, he's been on, he's been off. You could start off with that Florida game where we're already coming into it shorthanded because Cooper Mays isn't playing. Gerald Minty has some off the field stuff that keeps him from playing in that game outside of special teams. And then we end up going out and losing to a Florida team that we should have beat by two to three scores. So that right there kind of started it off. And then again, you know, as we keep on talking about, he was just very hot and cold all season. One of the biggest deals for me, though, was in that Citrus Bowl, seeing Nico kind of take that late hit from that Iowa guy. And then Gerald Mincy's right there and he doesn't say anything. I actually pointed it out in Nico's film breakdown. That rubbed me all types of wrong. OK, now Gerald Mincy is a guy who has a lot of talent. He could be a very good football player. Again, we saw it in 2022. But in 23, whenever he's not bought in, he's playing at right tackle, which he would have to play in 24 as well. You probably don't want to have a guy like that back on your team. OK, so I do wish him all the best, but we've got to get some players who will buy in, who will give their absolute all and who will protect, obviously, the eight million dollar man whenever those issues come up. So now do we have anyone else on this roster who could step in for Gerald Mincy? So we'll start off with Dane Davis, okay? We saw what he did in that Citrus Bowl. He's kind of, you know, played left tackle, right tackle. He's played guard. He's pretty much played everywhere since he's been on campus. Didn't love what he did in that Citrus Bowl, okay? If you look at most of the pressure that was on Nico, we gave up six sacks. Most of the pressure was coming from Dane Davis' side. I just don't think that he's quite ready, or I don't think that he's a guy that you would want to be your starter blocking for Nico in 2024. So who else do we have? Some people have been throwing out Bennett Warren, okay? He's going to be a true freshman. He's a big guy, 6'8", 330, 340 pounds. Looks like he has a really high ceiling. You know, he's got a strong upside to his game. But do you really want him coming out as a true freshman, blocking up against guys that are going to be first-round draft picks next year in the SEC? I just don't think that you do. If you watch his high school film, there is a lot for him to clean up, and I do fully expect that he will. Maybe at some point this season, he could be a guy that, you know, could potentially be a starting type of a body, but, you know, we don't have time to kind of wait early on in the season. We've got to win every game. We've got to make it to that 12-team playoff. I don't know if I would trust a true freshman just yet. Now, I don't want to try to discount what he can do because we haven't seen him play in college. Maybe he can. Maybe some of those other true freshmen can. Maybe there are some other bodies on this roster that we haven't seen play very much that can as well. That would be shame on the coaching staff, though, if these guys have been there. And we've been playing Dane Davis, and we saw what Dane Davis did. If we have someone better than what we put out there in that Citrus Bowl, I think that it would be a shame that the coaching staff didn't play him. So I'm going to lean more towards the side of we saw the best that we had out there. And guys can get better heading into spring, and I do expect for them to. So who knows how much people can grow. But at this point, I just don't see anyone on the roster that you trust at a tackle outside of John Campbell. All right, so that takes us to what is Tennessee going to do in the transfer portal to try to get a body in here immediately. And we talked about the guy from Kansas yesterday in Arnage Reed Adams. He's a guy that, you know, could play guard or he could play tackle. I got to watch this film and I really like what he could bring to this football team. I just think he's more of a guard body. Now, 
Do I think that he would be an upgraded tackle over Dane Davis? It looks like it to me. But, you know, again, it wouldn't be much of an upgrade. If you put him in at left guard, though, that spot would be filled and that would be a huge upgrade over what we could potentially have starting there. So he will be on campus this weekend. That's great news. I don't think that this staff will let him leave without, you know, saying, hey, we really need you. So they're going to give him their best pitch. I do expect for him to commit to Tennessee and I do expect for him to be on this roster moving forward. Now, who is out there that Tennessee could target to play tackle? Okay, we talked about Lance Hurd yesterday. That is the offensive tackle from LSU. He wants to come in and start at left tackle. So if he does come in, he would have to play left tackle. Is John Campbell going to be okay with that? I think he's not going to have a choice. And maybe we can talk Lance Hurd into, uh, you know, potentially playing right tackle. That would be huge because I do think that he could be a body that comes in and would prob probably be our best option at the other tackle next to John Campbell. It does sound like the staff is trying really hard to get him on campus. And, you know, we also talked about him potentially kind of leaning more towards Ole Miss. There's probably some truth to that, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. But Ole Miss is actually going to be hosting Diego Pound. That is another offensive tackle. He is from North Carolina. They're going to be hosting him this weekend. Is Ole Miss trying to bring in two tackles? I don't think that they are, but maybe they are, okay? I think that that kind of bodes well for Tennessee that, you know, Ole Miss is bringing in Diego Pound first. Maybe we can get Lance Hurd on campus before the end of this weekend. And, oh, by the way, we are also targeting Diego Pound. And since we haven't talked about him yet on this channel, I'll go ahead and tell you that Diego Pound was a three-star coming out of high school. He's six foot six, 330 pounds. He's played at North Carolina. He's a sophomore currently. He would come in as a junior. I believe he would have two more years left to play with Tennessee or with Ole Miss if that's where he decides to go. Again, he is going to be visiting there first. But if, if he leaves out of that visit at Ole Miss, okay, then maybe we can get him on campus before the end of this weekend because Sunday starts a dead period, which means that we can't talk to anybody and we will not be able to talk to anyone until January the 11th. Uh, and then we'll have, you know, a little bit more of a window where we can kind of talk to some guys, get them back on campus, things like that. But right now, the biggest push for Tennessee is to get as many offensive line bodies on campus before this weekend is up as we possibly can. And those last two guys, okay, and Lance Hurd and Diego Pound are two guys that Tennessee is targeting at tackle, okay? Have not seen Diego Pound play just yet. Haven't seen his film, but it does sound like he's going to be a, a better option than what we have on the roster currently. Um, and I also think probably would be a better option than what Arnaj Reed Adams would give you at tackle. All right, and the last guy that we're going to be talking about on this video is Aiden White. He's a cornerback from NC State, 6 feet, 189 pounds. He was a three-star coming out of high school. And if he does transfer to Tennessee, he would come in as a senior. So I think he would only have one year left to play with us. But with the COVID year stuff, who knows? He might have two years to play with us, but I'm sure that he would want to be a one-and-done guy. You know, he was kind of mentioned as a guy who could have potentially gone to the NFL this season. I got to watch his film. I think he's a pretty solid football player. You know, again, he's a guy that is going to be pretty solid in man-to-man -man coverage. It seems like everyone that this staff is targeting in that secondary, very similar, uh, you know, in that aspect of it. They want guys who can cover man-to-man -man and guys who are willing to be physical. But I do think that the staff is probably only going to bring in one guy from the secondary. We've got Jalen McMurray. That's the cornerback from Temple. He's on campus this weekend. And I think that if he chooses Tennessee, then that's going to be it. I just kind of feel like that secondary room is kind of getting crowded. You don't want to lose any of those younger guys to the transfer portal. If we don't hear about any more names entering into the transfer portal for Tennessee, uh, you know, by the end of today, then that's going to be it until that spring window. So, you know, maybe we can hold on to them, uh, you know, until that spring window and maybe try to convince them to stay. But I highly, highly doubt that. Just would not recommend to this staff bringing in more than one secondary player. But again, I'm not up there. I don't get to see these guys. So maybe they kind of want to push some more guys out of the door uh, in that secondary. But that's going to be it for this video. You know, those are my thoughts. I would love to hear y'all's down in the comment section, especially about Gerald Mincy and with the offensive line. What do you think Tennessee is going to do? moving forward. And as always, please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks. Peace.